Uh, now, do you have a, a different leadership style when you deal with groups that are all black, mixed race, or all white? Are you different? I don't know, I'm different. I think I'm aware. Um, there's a... So, you know, I grew up in a small white town in California, and I spent my summers in the black middle class in West Baltimore. And you had to act differently. I mean, if I called a woman who was older than me by California, Mrs., she thought I was insulting her and, and reminding her that she was old and had wrinkles. If I called a woman who was older than me on the East Coast uh, by her first name, my grandmother hit me in the back of my head, you know? Not hard, but just, you know. And I had a lot of anxiety about that, because my grandmother called by their first name. I had to remember their last name. I hadn't seen them for 10 months. But it was a setup. Um, so, you know, I guess any, or, you know, part of being an, an organizer is just being aware of who you're talking to and what the kind of cultural norms are, and whether you say Mrs. or whether you say Jane or whether you um, hug somebody or you shake their hand. Um, but the message is the same, and the sense of urgency is the same, and the, the you know, um, the sort of willingness to talk about uncomfortable subjects and to challenge people is the same. Right now, we're at a historical moment where all of us need to be thinking about how we talk about issues of race because, one, there's been a lot of black civil rights advocates who've invested a lot of time doing a lot of communication strategy work, and we've, and we've learned some things. But also because, simply because the bigots have been dying very rapidly. A certain generation of people are really hardened, you know. There seems to be more people in the middle who could go either way. I mean, you talked about the experience of workers in the primaries. I can never forget folks saying that in engaging independents in New Hampshire, that, that they had a number of white men cry because they didn't know, they just couldn't decide whether they should vote for Obama or for McCain. Now, obviously, there is a political spectrum that goes far beyond both those men, but they're fairly radically different political choices. There's a lot of people like that in this country. And so why, while I don't change how I, much other than greetings and so forth and decorum, how I talk to different groups, I am trying to figure out how to change how I talk to all groups. Because I do think that winning our goal in the NAACP, our final goal, which is to really make manifest Lincoln's dream of one nation for everybody, might change that we all, might require that we all change how we talk to everybody.